Please welcome from New Haven, Connecticut, USA, the wrath of God, Elvin Ayala. Look him in his eyes, punch him in his mouth, beat him in his face, knock his stupid out. Look him in his eyes, punch him in his mouth, beat him in his face, knock his stupid out. I'm coming for your flesh and blood. Nothing less than build a beating upside of your head. Architect training most of my life. Bombing and fist fighting, spilling blood all over the ring. I'm a life. Forget the way it. I'ma bring it straight to your mug. We can get it. With the bare knuckles and gloves. So hard. I'm a killer from the underground. Red Moon. Time to put another body down. Fight me and you committing a sin. I'm finished careers. Fighters never fighting again. I'm keeping it locked. I ain't letting none of it rock. Slip and throw a right hook and I'm a wide of your clock. It landed block. I'm keeping my aim at the top. Boom, blah, blah. Connect three and he drop. Fight is over. Now send me another fresh one. Tell Don King he better send me his best one. Look him in his eyes. Punch him in his mouth. Beat him in his face, knock his stupid f***s out Look him in his eyes, punch him in his mouth Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome to Super League Entertainment. You already know it's your boy Jason Rodriguez, and I am here live in the Super League studio for an exclusive interview with a really good friend of mine. But before I introduce um, our guest for tonight, I just want to thank each and every one of you that are watching live right now via Facebook. Listen, I'm going to kindly ask you to press that share button Share it onto your timeline. Let someone know, you know, just share it and let someone know about what we have going on here tonight. And I mean, I have a really, really special guest in the studio tonight. A really good friend of mine, a professional boxer, Mr. Elvin Ayala. What's up, oh, Elvin? How you doing, man? How's All right. Good, good man. You, man. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Doing good. You know, so, one day so, at a time. Yeah, listen, man. I'm excited that you're here tonight, man. <laughs> I'm excited, too. You know, the last time we did an interview was about a year ago. Yeah. About that time, yeah. <laughs> was that for the um, fight when I had with uh, Vaughn Alexander? Yes, that was for the yeah. fight that you had with Vaughn Alexander. Yeah. So, so what's going on with Alvin Ayala, man? What's going on in your life right now, brother? Uh, I'm just, um, you know, I've been boxing for, for a little while now. Uh, I kind of picked that up just in my life, you know, from my background and stuff like that. But, you know, I ended up taking it really serious. And uh, I'm at the point now where I'm getting older. I'm 38. It's not that I'm too old for boxing, but um, I want to do other things. You know, I want to want to promote. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, lo I love boxing, so I'm still fighting. But uh, I kind of want to be in the boxing world on the other side now and and help these fighters out. You know, and promote shows and and do things like that where where I can you know be more of a value to the fight game. I mean, you have. An amazing career. So you've had a great career in the sport of boxing. Yes. Um, you bring a lot of experience into the sport. Um, you have a record of 29 and 13. And you know what? To be honest with you, people here 13, and they may look down on it. Some people may frown on the 13 losses. But honestly, I've seen most of your fights. Those 13 losses aren't really 13 losses. And yeah. we both know that. Yeah, yeah. For example, when you fought against Arthur Abraham. That's right. Yeah. You got knocked out. Yeah. But... It wasn't because he punched you. Yeah. It was because he hit you with an elbow. Yeah, a couple of head shots and the top of the head. And all yeah. That. He so need me. He need me twice in that fight too. It, yeah. I don't like to like make excuses either. You know, like it's, it's not that you make. I'm any a fighter. You know, so yeah. I'm like, eh, hey, you know, it is what it is. You know. I mean, it's not that you're making excuses because I already know your type of you know personality, your type of character. You're the type that'll take a fight. You won't say no. no. I mean, and that's the way a real fighters fight. That's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Should be like that. I think I actually when and when I start my promotion, you know, I want to do that. I don't want to cover and kind of uh, like you know uh, babysit fighters and like oh I just want to you know cater to this fighter. I really want to be in there and let the best fight the best instead of kind of like sugarcoating you know and building a record up. You know, let's just let the best fight the best and see what happens. I mean, that's what we that's how we determine who really is the best in this boxing game. So my first question for you is, because you have a rec, I mean, you have 42 professional fights on your record, mm -hmm. 13 knockouts. Mm -hmm. I mean, how did you get started in the sport of boxing? Because I know you don't really have an amateur no, background. I don't. So at what age did you get started and what got you involved in the sport of boxing? 
Uh, I think I was about, man, the first time I even put gloves on, I was probably like 13, 14 years old. You know, I, I lived in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, but back in the days, it was we was on this block that was just you know it was drug populated block. It was a it was a you know like street street block. But uh, I had some some older guys there that were on the block. You know, like Chepo mm-hmm. and, and and he almost served as my first promoter because you know he used to set up fights like yo fifty dollars whoever wins. You know, <laughs> so I was doing stuff like that and I didn't even know. Uh-huh. But. Uh, he never really gave me the 50 bucks, but he would do stuff like buy me a bag, yep. you know, and buy me gloves or jump rope. So yeah, he was like pretty much my first promoter at, at that time. And then I, and then I kind of, uh, I came to Connecticut. I, you know, life was bumpy. Mm-hmm. I, I was having my first kid already, you know, I was young. But I came over here to Connecticut, went to New Haven. The first gym I ever been to was Ring One Boxing. Oh, okay, that's with uh, Brian Clark. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. And then uh, I kind of, w- I seen Chad Dawson, as a matter of fact, he was in the amateurs and he was doing great. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, he's about to make some money. You know, so I kind of was like, oh, you can make money doing this? <laughs> yeah, so I, I started just fighting, you know. And I remember I, I got up to like uh, 14 amateur fights and uh, Roland Royce, rest in peace, he was the president at this time of, of the amateur boxing. And he was like, you know, I want you to stay in the amateurs. You know, you're going to do great. And I was just trying to make money. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, you know, I don't think that's for me. You know, I need, I need to start making money, you know. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, you'll make money. Just be patient. But, you know, I was a kid, you know, and and, and I just was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going in. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be the best. I'm going to go in. And I did. I went in and, and I kind of just took the whole everybody by by surprise you know i was just doing great in the beginning of my career yeah that's that's great so you're a professional fighter you just recently i, I mean what was this like two weeks ago yeah you were on the on the card of sergey kovalov versus alvarez the rematch that's right out there in texas yeah um you went nine rounds yeah against a really tough Russian, man. And yeah. you know those Ukrainian Russian dudes don't yeah. play around. Yeah, I didn't watch him either. I didn't, I don't know nothing about him. You know, they, when I got this fight, I was just like, hey, let's go. You know, like, how, you can't be the best unless you fight the best. Yeah. So I feel like that, so. I mean, you didn't get the win. No. And um, it went down as a technical knockout. Mm-hmm. What exactly happened in that fight? Well, you know, I was, I kind of like was waking up and throughout the rounds, you know, like, I'm like, oh, okay, he does this, you know, so. So that, that could have been a mistake that I had that I didn't watch him because mm-hmm. I probably would have, you know, picked up on things right away in the first round. But I was I was doing that. I was kind of learning mm-hmm. while I was fighting this kid. So I started doing better. I heard him in the, I think in the fifth or the sixth round was a couple body shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he caught me in the ninth round. We, you know, it's later in the round, caught me with a shot where he, he did sting me a little bit. So I kind of was moving out the way, and when I moved out the way, I stumbled and I fell. So I got up quick. You know, I probably should have took the eight count, but I did. I got up really quick. I was like, I'm, I feel good. I'm good. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, the referee's like, Are you all right? You know, step over here, step over here, walk to me. So I did this. So he put us to fight again, and so I was just moving, slipping. You know, I really wasn't throwing any punches, and this kid was throwing punches. So even while I was moving, mm-hmm. you know, he they didn't like that. He caught me again. You know. It wasn't nothing solid, but he caught me again. So they just jumped in and stopped the fight. So I didn't argue with them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was like, you know what, <laughs> that yeah. way. you know what I'm saying? I put it in, I went in there, I probably, I know I could have beat him had I been a little more tactical and done a couple things different. But this is, that's one thing that's for sure about me is this fight life. You know, I'm not afraid. You know, you don't, you don't have to, uh, be, not being afraid can also get you hurt because you cannot be afraid and still get hurt. You know? Well, we both know we can't play boxing. Yeah, you don't play boxing. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't. I was. I'm never afraid, but I like to be a lot more smarter. You know. So me being smarter also means for me, like I can help somebody else that is younger coming up by being a promoter. You know, and kind of direct them in the right place and not getting them robbed because I, I experienced that too in the boxing world. Mm. You know, I took the back back end, the shaft stick with, with the money and stuff like that. You know, it's like one of the shadiest business out there. But at the same time, it's, I, I have so much respect for it because, you know, when I'm in there, it's me. I got to be me and I got to fight somebody. So we're really fighting for our money. We're really, Absolutely. You know, 
So it's like one of the last frontiers of, of the American way, you know, like this is a struggle. We're making this work. You yeah. Know? I mean, you're a price fighter and definitely you want to make some money as you engage in combat. That's right. So with that said, you're 38 years old. You're creeping up to 40, man. Yeah. You know, you're creeping up there. I feel stronger. (laughs) You're definitely in good shape. Yeah, definitely. I mean, because, you know, I see you in training camp. I see you doing, you know, going through your routine. You're in impeccable shape, which is, you know, to be 38, you're in great shape. Yeah. And for you to engage in the fight like you did two weeks ago, you're definitely in good shape. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. But, um, so, you know, leading up to the question that you just stated, promoting. My question is, you're 38, how many fights do you feel you have left in your career, and what do you see life for Evan Ayala after boxing? Well, um, to be honest with you, man, the right numbers always get me in the ring. So, you know, I, I got, I definitely have another, you know, me, me just kind of saying, oh, I just want to, I, I could say easily another six solid fights, you know? But money, money, good money, mm-hmm. I'll probably do another two, three fights, you know? And then um, if this promotional thing takes off like I'm expecting it to take off, I probably won't even fight no more. So, so when you say promotional thing, so you're telling me is that you're planning on becoming a boxing promoter? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. okay. I want to I wanna do that because I just feel like I could be of so much better service there, you know? Not just be, I mean, I'm an entertainer. It's what you gotta, you know, that's that's a reality for a fighter, you know? Mm-hmm. So you, <clears throat> I wanna kinda entertain still, but not get in the punches, you know? <laughs> I, I'd rather be in there and put the shows together yeah. and then get a few fighters and kinda whatever I've learned, put it put it to them mm-hmm. so they, they can already have that torch and be that much ahead of the game. So, you, so, so do you see yourself just becoming a promoter or do you see yourself also becoming a trainer? Uh, it depends because that's hard too training you know full time you gotta you really gotta put it in just as much as the fighter is putting uh-huh. in so that that sort of depends you know I, I kind of want to like if I was gonna get a fighter he'd have to be more than what I was doing you know and I was I was always game mm-hmm. I never said no to any training I never said no to any fight you know so somebody gotta show me something like that for me to say yeah you know what I'm gonna put it all on hold and put my time in the training this person yeah other than that I would I would like these fighters to like take themselves seriously seriously and train the best that they can and then I'll put the shows together you know and I'll promise you the money and I won't rob nobody you know keep it a hundred legit like that where that'll be beneficial for these fighters that are blood sweat and tears training doing dieting you know like some people don't even realize what a fighter goes through yeah because he's not only fighting in the ring he's fighting himself from all these other things like even food something as small as food Mm -hmm. and uh so if i can so that's what i'm planning on i plan on sharing this information and uh getting a solid a little crew small crew nothing big but solid fighters and get Connecticut behind them, you know, and show show a true champion, what true champion life is about. Yeah. Not just in the ring and, you know, being showboat and doing what he's doing, then outside the ring he does whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, real character, people with respect, and, mm-hmm. you know, some, some honor. Yeah. You know, discipline, stuff like that. You know, coming out of New Haven, Connecticut, um, you know, New Haven has a couple of great names. Mm-hmm. Chad Dawson, mm-hmm. you know, we had K.O. King. Yeah. Louis Rosa, yeah, rest in peace. Um, Tremaine Williams, mm-hmm. and then we also have Elvin Ayala. Yeah. You know, all you guys put New Haven and Connecticut on the map. Yeah. But at this point, I mean, how do you feel you have represented the city that you're from? Um, <clears throat> well, you know, a lot of people don't even realize that I'm from Pennsylvania, Reading, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And Connecticut adopted me, you know, and I've represented so much for them too, you know, for Connecticut, because I felt the love, you know, but the, the city that I'm from is such a hard city, and I always give love and respect to there, because it's like the small, the little city, the little grunty city, and these superstars come out of there, mm-hmm. you know, they, they, they titans out of Reading, you know, so, so I feel like coming from there already gave me the strength and the background, so like, yo, let's, let's say I'm about this, we gonna do this. Mm-hmm. And then coming to Connecticut and the support and the love I got over here, you know, I was just like, I'm gone. I'm going all the way with this. Yeah, yeah. It felt good. You know, yeah. it felt really good. How hard is it 
to, to stay focused and disciplined when you know, you, you're trying to be a successful fighter. Mm. Because you, you hear stories of fighters who, who fall by the wayside. Yeah. You know, some fighters can't make weight. Uh, I mean, how hard how hard is it for you to be disciplined? Man, that's that's like so that's the biggest challenge of it all. Because uh, you know, anybody can say, Oh yeah, he's that kid's gonna make it, you know, that kid's gonna do good and, and there's they just because they are seeing these things that the kid has, all this good stuff. If that kid is not disciplined. It doesn't matter what they say or what they see. Yep. You know, that that's major. Just your discipline is major. Because nobody can really force that on you. Nobody can really have that for you. You you have to have that. You have to say, yeah, no, I, they're telling me all the right stuff, but not only am I hearing the right stuff, I'm applying this to myself. Mm -hmm. So it's major, you know, and it's how bad you really want it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So an, an individual in your in your capacity, you've been granted many great opportunities. PBC, main events, you fought on the Bella cards. Mm -hmm. uh, you basically have traveled cross country. I mean, yeah. you fought in, you know, Madison Square Garden. I mean, you've been everywhere. Yeah. Um, at the highest pinnacle of the sport. Mm. How does that make you feel, knowing of your accomplishments? Man, I, I've, you know, I've, I've had ups and down feelings with that. Because I'm, I've had the down feelings where I'm like, man, I can't believe I lost to this, you know. I'm over now, y'all, like I can smash these fools, man, like, God. Yep, yep. You know, and then I come down to my humble side, like, yo, bro, man. You know, you only got 14 amateur fights, you know, like, dude, like, come on, man. These guys have been doing this all their life, you know, like, this is not easy. Like, you just kind of just stepped in this and expect to be the best. And then I started talking to myself again, like, yeah, yeah, you know what? I do expect to be the best. Yeah. I, I do expect to run it, run these guys through and just do what I do, you know? So I get to that challenge a lot in my, within myself. With the age getting older, I'm starting to feel like, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to, like, step back and chill and, and do it on a, on a wider screen now as a promoter. Yes. Because, um, I mean, I love it. I love the, I love... Even the battles, going in, I've been in with battles, broken ribs, you know, urinating blood, you know, face all mangled and all beat up. And then they're like, oh, in the winter, open that y'all up. All that pain goes away. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and it just makes it worth it. Yeah, yeah. So that part right there, that, you know, when you have discipline for that and you can reach that, and it's, it's, it's the greatest. It's the greatest. It makes this boxing so worth it. I'll go in again. Even now, I feel like. I'll go in again, mm -hmm. but I'm just trying to use my brain a little more instead of my, my cojones, you know Absolutely. what I mean? So that way I can be of service, better service for people, you know? Cause I, I do see that I got a good following, you yeah. know, from different parts too. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know what? I, I don't want to be seen as a cualquiera anymore. So if they're watching me, I'm going to be exciting. I'm going to mm -hmm. be, you know, I'm going to reach for the top mm -hmm. and let them see something good. You have some notable fights. You fought David Lemieux, mm -hmm. uh, Sergey uh, Derinchenko. Yeah, yeah. You fought Sergio Mora. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Arthur Abraham. Yeah, that was a uh, tough fight. Curtis Stevens. Yeah. I mean, you fought some serious opponents, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and, and you're still here in your full capacity. Yeah. I mean, so what yeah. was it like to, to experience fighting those type of individuals? Well, uh, <clears throat> man, you know, some of them were like, not good experiences, but even with that, I learned something from it. Mm -hmm. But man, I've I've been in with those uh, fighters. Man, I've been into a, a war. Like, like I'm like, man, this guy is really not stopping. <laughs> He's gonna keep he keep punching me. Like, you know, like <laughs> didn't that punch I hit you with wasn't that enough? And it's not. So, I've I've been in it with some like, man, brutal wars that I've kind of after the fight I felt like, yeah, this is it. I'm not, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something else. And that definitely lasted for like a week, two weeks. <laughs> then I start working out again. And I'm like, you know what, man? I, I messed up because I did this wrong. I'm going to do this now. You, know? uh -huh. you learn from it. I learn from it. And I change. I change all the time. So whenever you experience a loss, uh, uh, the after result, the after effect, is it, 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 does it automatically kick in where, you know what, I'm done. You know, I, I don't want to do this no more. I've gotten there. I've gotten to that point. 
but I've gotten there with like with, with real brutal fights, like even the Arthur Abraham fight. I remember after that fight, I was like, you know. And what? I, listen, I'm gonna stick to what I believe. He didn't knock you out legitimately. Yeah, no. Nah. He hit you with his elbow. Listen, he knocked you out with an elbow, bro. I've been trying to look for that fight on <laughs> online. He can't even find the fight. Yeah, you yeah. Know? They do that to me a lot. I got, I have like. But you know he knocked you out with an elbow, right? Oh yeah, oh, bro. Okay. I had two, I had two knees from uh -huh. this guy. Like it was crazy. He literally lifted his knee up. Boom. Yeah. He hit me in my chest. I looked at the referee like, yeah. Referee was like, ah, I said something to him in Germany. Like, back up, back up, back up. It was like, fight. Yep. And I'm like, okay. Uh -huh. Stadium packed. Everybody like, ah, ah, ah. You know, so I'm like, all right, well, I got to keep fighting. You know, what am I going to do? Yep. If I would have known better, like what I know now, I probably would have done something different. Like, yo, you know, this guy's really kneeing me. He's picking up his knee and kneeing me in my chest. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know any better, you know? I don't know what I know now, that's for sure. What's, what's that feeling like? You in a stadium, 10, 20, 30, 40, yeah, 50, 60,000 yeah. people screaming. Yeah. And I've seen fights where they're screaming your name. Yeah, yeah. What does that <laughs> feel like? Man, I, I remember that when that first happened to me. I remember the feeling like, oh man, I don't want to let these people down. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pressure. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, man, I hope this, yo, oh, man, I hope this punch just works, you know. <laughs> and then after the bell rings, ding, and we start rumbling, oh, I don't hear nothing. Everything just goes away. Uh huh. And, uh -huh. It's, and it's in fight mode now, you know. And it just kicks in naturally. Boop, 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 you know, we're slipping these punches. Usually when I'm not thinking, when my head is just not thinking about anything, I do so great. It's mostly when I'm in there and I'm like contemplating on this and man, I do, man, did I do this and man, did I do that? It messes me all up. You know? Yeah. So the the fight game, it's a lot to do with you know your strength and all that, but it's more to do with your mind. You know, if your mind ain't clear, forget it. Yeah. Just do something else. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And they got plenty of other jobs to do too, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because you get punched in the face, that'll change your mind about things, you know? Like, everybody wants to be a fighter or something. You get punched in your face a couple times, but that might change your mind. I have another question for you, but before we go into that question, we're going to take a quick break, all right? All right, yes, sir. All right, you guys that are watching via Facebook Live, stay tuned. We'll be right back momentarily. On February 16th, the earthquake returns to L.A. El terremoto! World featherweight champion Leo Santa Cruz is ready to rock his hometown crowd. Ooh, big right hand. It's a world title showdown. BBC on Fox! As Santa Cruz puts his belt on the line. You have got to be kidding me! Against Rafael Big Bang Rivera. PBC on Fox. Live from Microsoft Theater. February 16th, only on Fox on the Fox Sports app. There's a powerful and dangerous drug claiming more and more Canadian lives every day. Anyone can become addicted. Your children, your parents, your siblings. Fentanyl is 100 times more toxic than morphine. Any illegal drug can be laced with it, including fake prescription pills. All it takes to be lethal is the equivalent of two grains of salt. Protect yourself and those you love. A message from the Government of Canada. All right, so we're back. We're sorry about the technical difficulty. The microphone wasn't put on, but we're back. And also, we, listen, we got to give a big shout out to the Foster Brothers. That's somebody right. mentioned on Facebook about the Foster Brothers. So we got to right. give a shout out to the Foster Brothers. Charles Foster. Charles Foster. William Foster. William Foster. Right. You know, those guys, Charles Foster, have a big fight coming up in Boston, Massachusetts right. yep. with Murphy's Boxing. So listen, you know, big shout out to the Foster Brothers. Um, but let's get back to, uh, to another question that someone had mentioned on, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Someone asked... What is going to be the name of your promotional company? Uh, my, my, uh, the name for my company is going to be Fight Life Entertainment. Fight Life, you know, boxing sports. I, I mean, that to me is like perfect because that's what it is. It's Fight Life, you know what I mean? And you got to get up and have that in your mind all day. But at the same time, you got to be a gentleman, you know? So that's like, for me, like, you know, a constitutionalized savage in a sense, you know? like. You have to be this beast, but you also have to know how to talk and, and, and be calm, you know? So, I don't know. I just felt like Fight Life was like the best, the best thing for it. So. Fight Life. So someone had mentioned about your promotional company. Um, eventually, we were talking about life after boxing, and your plan is to become a, a, a legitimate promoter. Right, right. And you realize all the hard work and dedication that, that, that it requires. Mm -hmm. And uh, you already started formulating a team yes. that you, uh, you're you going to have backing you up. That's right, yeah. Um, solid team. Solid team. Yeah. 
All right, so t talk to me a little bit more about what it is that you plan on doing. Well, um, you know, I, I, the promotional thing, you know, speaks for itself in a sense because uh, I'm going to be putting shows together. But uh, I want to do it a little different than, than, you know, the regular ways they do it. Not put throwing dirt on any prom boxing promoter They're doing a great job because boxing still exists. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just want to put a little twist on it, you know, coming from the field, you know, in the ring. I literally fought all my life, mostly all my life. So I feel like I have a different view on things where I can assist these fighters more than somebody else that never been in the ring. And uh, I want to bring that. I want to bring that and, and share that with my knowledge, share my knowledge with these fighters and kind of take care of them. And so the name of the, the program of the boxing promotion thing is going to be Fight Life. Mm. Fight Life Promotions, you know, because it's like in life, that's what it is. You, you know, you, you need that struggle to get to the next level. You need that, that battle, you know, and usually after a victorious battle, people, no matter how beat up they feel, they feel victorious. Like, yeah, I'm, I did it. I yeah. did it. You know, that accomplishment. So I just feel like fight life really stuck out to me really good. So I'm going to go with that. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. So, you know, my next question for you is, because, man, it was just two weeks ago you were in the ring. Yeah. You were, you were kicking ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I mean, I seen I seen the end result of the fight. You, you were all busted up, too. Let's keep yeah. it real. Yeah, no, it, it's the hurt game. That's right. That's yeah. what comes with it. That's right, yeah. Now, how the hell did you recover so quickly, busy? Your friend, your face looks fresh. <laughs> yeah, my, my lady be telling me that. She's like, I swear you got like Wolverine blood. <laughs> and I'll be like, shit, let's not tell everybody. <laughs> I just um I just stay cool, man. Like, you know, I don't I don't I don't party, you know, I don't I don't go crazy and I don't I'm just, I just don't waste a lot of moves in my life, period, you know, like the food that I eat, you know, I, I make sure what goes in my body is, is really helping my body. You know, it's like if you had a race car, this super, super hyped up race car, you're not going to put regular gas in it. You're going to put quality gas in it, quality oil, you know, quality stuff for this car to run properly. So same thing with, with a fighter. You want to put the good stuff in them and have them at his best all the time, you know? Yeah. So I want to share that too with with fighters, you know, like in my in the promotional thing that I'm doing. I want to make sure that my fighters, you know, I don't want to I don't want to cater to them in a, in a sense where I just want to get them easy fights and because I don't think that helps anybody, mm -hmm. you know. I rather them, you know, be a hundred percent with themselves, train to the fullest, and fight against the best. Mm -hmm. And let's see who is the best for real, because that's what we do. We fight to win mm -hmm. and say, yeah, I'm the best, you know, I, my hand skills are better than yours. Yeah. So that's that's what I want to do. That's going to be another difference in my in my promotion. I'm not going to be catering to yes. these people, you know, it's going to be fights. When you come to my fights, you're going to see some fights. Let's talk about the young kids out there, the amateurs, okay. the up and coming, mm -hmm. wishing for an opportunity to be where you are, you know, fighting on a big car. You just fought yeah. on that car with, uh, Kovalov and yeah, Alvarez, yeah. that's a great opportunity, yeah, man. Win or lose, yeah, that's nah, a great absolutely, opportunity. Absolutely. And you made some good money. Yeah, definitely. So you need to break me off a piece when you get a chance. <laughs> yeah. We're going to do good things together. Don't you worry about that. But, but yeah, no. But that, yeah, but that just speaking fight, to the young people. Speaking to the young fight, people. That fight, you know, uh, man, I, speaking to the young people, you know, I wish, I wish that I can be there every day for, for these young pe cats so that they don't get taken like I was taken in the boxing game. You know, because I had no idea. You know, I, I was just always never afraid, you know? And so they like, oh yeah, let's get him. Let's put him in there, you know? Oh, let's put him in there with this undefeated fight or so what? And then I would just win. So, you know, I just I just won a lot. I just kept winning. They kept putting me in there with these fights and I just kept winning. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I it started changing, but I, was, I didn't know yet. I was still kind of immature about it in the boxing game. So, so do you think that taking any fight that's that's presented to you is a wise thing or should a fighter avoid doing stuff like that like taking fights at the last minute that i mean i'm just i'm just you know your thing with them, i'm just so like i don't care you know i mean i care but i don't at the same time i'm like fearless so I would just, I took every fight they threw at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do is fights where I'm, I kept calling them and they're like, no, we changed our mind. I'm like, yo, you sure? <laughs> I'll come down a few more pounds, you know? Cause yeah. I just wanted to get in there and see if I can win this cat, you know? So, um, but nah, 
I, right now, I would I would say, no, not not that a fighter should say, oh no, we don't want to fight him, because we want to watch our, our records. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you're lined up, and it's your turn to fight this guy to prove your your ranking to see where you at, then yeah, go for that fight and and see where you at, you know. But uh, if you're a, if you're like up and coming fighter, see like me, I only have 14 amateur fights. Most of these people that I fight with have like 100, 200 amateur fights alone, and then they have whatever pro fights they have. So they already have a lot more experience. Mm -hmm. So for a young fighter, you know, I would I would like to season him up in there too. But then at the same time, I also felt like I had an advantage where I didn't have so much ring rust and ring tear, wear and tear because I didn't have so much amateur fights. Mm -hmm. I felt, I feel still young. I feel like I still got so many fights in me. You know, I, if anything, I want to protect my brain because I just feel like I do, I can do better on the business side of it. Yes. But, um, but yeah, look, like for fighters, young fighters up now coming, I'm going to actually look at a few of them and the amateurs and kind of reach out to them and, and guide them. I mean, I can't guide every single one of them. If I could, I would. Yes. But the ones that I can guide, that I will guide, I'm going to take them to the top. And as far as, as long as they take themselves there too, I'll make sure that I'll get them there. But they got to fight, you know, and they got to be a fighter. They, they got to do this, you know? Absolutely. So me, me kind of going into the fight game and having that experience, I, I feel like I know what it takes. So if I don't see that, you know, because a lot of fighters, will, they'll make, they'll sound good. It feels good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, make you feel like, oh, yeah, I got a champion. This guy's a champion. Yeah. But deep inside, they don't, they're not about that life. Mm -hmm. So you got to kind of like find that and make sure you got the right one. So there's a bunch of kids out there that are boxing, you know, and, they, and it's almost like they pick it up from the next, from the last guy, you know, and they trying to look for just a, you know, this is the way we do, you know, and, and, and they hope for the best. But then there's some fighters out there that are really serious and take all that they're supposed to do and they kind of make it work. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that I want. Those are the ones that will be world champion quick. And then they'll continue their life and show the rest of the fighters and kind of make this go in, in, a, in a fashionable way where nobody's getting robbed, man. Yep. Because this boxing game is really shady. That's, Absolutely. that's the truth. You know Absolutely. what I mean? So the, all the hard work and the pain that these fighters put in, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think that they should be getting robbed or treated like that. So I want to kind of like adjust that as, as much as I can. At least. When does an individual say to himself, you know what, I got it. Meaning I can, I can do this. I can compete at the highest level of the sport. I can take a punch and give one. When does a person realize that? Man, well, for me, it kind of worked right away. I had to feel like that right from the very first fight. You know, even if I really wasn't ready, but I had to feel that. I had to feel like, yeah, nah, I'm going in there. They can't beat me. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you're not feeling like that, then you probably shouldn't go in there, you know? Yeah. Because it, it's, it's crazy. It's, it really is the only sport you don't play, mm -hmm. you know? But at the same time, you go and after, you know, with your face all mangled up, you go to, oh, good fight, man, that was a good fight. <laughs> You know, I've been in there with some fighters that they're not so friendly like that. They they was pissed off. I'm, I mean, in the middle of the fight, they cursing at me. I'm like, huh? Yeah, I was gonna ask you that. Let's talk about trash talking. Oh, I mean, but I've seen you talk some trash too. Yeah, I'm not good. I'm not good at trash talking. <laughs> man. And trash talking does sell. Yeah, it but does. um, it does. is that a good thing? Well, if you're good at it, you know, and and it works for you, I guess. But that's not good for me. It it always messed me up. So even when they trash talk me. I'll lose my focus, you know? I know this now, but at the time I didn't know this, uh -huh. you know? So they'll be like, I, I've never seen this kid in my life, you know? Uh -huh. This is the first time we had to weigh in. And all of a sudden he's like, yeah, 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 yo, your mom, is, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> what? Yo, what? You know, I'm ready to go crazy. Uh huh. And I lose myself. Yeah. And so that that's bad, you know what I mean? Some people are good at it. Some people tra trash talk like Mayweather. Mayweather trash talk somebody and really put them in their own place, like have them scared. Well, Mayweather built his whole entire career on trash talking. Yeah, so it worked for him, but uh -huh. it didn't It didn't work for me. That's yeah. not good for me. But, uh, but then again, people that it's not good for, they probably should learn that. To learn like how to cope with that, to not lose their focus, mm -hmm. because it happens. People try any way to, to make you lose. And you can lose any way, you know. First you lose yourself, and then you lose in a fight, you Yeah. Know? 
Let's talk about training um, or trainers, if I should say. Um, having a trainer versus training yourself. What do you feel is the best route to take? Well, I got to be honest, you know, having a trainer is, is freaking phenomenal, mm -hmm. you know. Having a good trainer is, is, is the best. So a good trainer will consist of your connection, right? The fighter and the trainer, they have this connection where, you know, no matter what you're saying, everything just flows, you know? Well, so I've had trainers like that in my career, mm -hmm. but you know, then along the career, some, you know, somebody's idea is here and my idea is here and, and it would kind of lose track. Mm -hmm. And instead of, because I've always been like, you know what, if this, if this is not going to work, I'm going to go somewhere else. Yeah. You know, I always try to make whatever I can make work for my personal family because, you know, I mean, nobody else is going to do it. So at, the, at these times when this happened, where my trainer, you know, I wasn't connecting, I would go to my, I would go by myself. And so I've had numerous fights where I go on my own and I train, do my own training. And then I just go hire anybody and just bring, bring them in the corner and I win. Mm -hmm. So because I win, I feel good about that. Like, this is what I got to do. I got to stick to myself. I got to yep, do my yep, own yep. thing, you know? And then I get to a higher level where I'm like, eh, maybe I needed a good trainer. Maybe I needed somebody in there to kind of like direct me because you it's just, just that last little second, you know, like somebody that's good to say, hey, listen, man, you, you've been hurting them to the body. You know, you need to... You need to take them out this next round. Go right after them, you know, and kind of keep you awake, you know, versus you being by yourself and you're like, man, he caught me, man. That last shot, man, that was that was a stinger. Maybe I should stay away. And nobody in your corner is telling you anything different. They're just giving you water, like you're doing good, man. You're doing good. You know how how important is it, is it for you to be in sync with the person that's in your corner? And what I mean by that is someone should be in your corner giving you some some real instructions yeah. instead of just telling you go in there and knock them out yeah, knock them out knock great. them out keep throwing punches you know you're yeah. just saying whatever how important is that that's very important i mean like i was saying like you know in my career i've had i've had trainers and i've also been in there without no trainers and of course when i went there without no trainers i felt like this was the best thing for me like yo this is what i've been was supposed to do i was supposed to be training myself mm -hmm. but then i get to another level where it shows me like hey you know what this guy is in here training his butt off too, and he's here ready to whoop you up mm -hmm. as well as I'm trying to beat him. But except he got his corner, and they're all on the same page. So yeah, when the bell rings, there's only two guys fighting, but then the bell rings and you go to a break, and then you got that team there. So a lot of times that fighter comes back out, and he's like refreshed and revived, he's back out there because he got all these right information. So that is important. I think it's super important Yeah. to have like the right team. But, but and you know, the wrong team can do you just as much as damage. You know, the wrong team will have you losing. And you, you could be in the best shape of your life and could have probably beat this kid, but yep. the wrong team will have you losing too. So yeah, I believe it's very important to have the right team in your corner. You've been down before, meaning you hit the canvas. That's right. When you're on the canvas, down, on the ground, how hard is it for you to lift yourself back up before that 10 count shoot man I, I i give you a couple scenarios with that one <laughs> so the first time i ever hit the canvas man i i went down it was in germany against arthur abraham went down i i remember seeing the tape afterwards because i don't remember uh -huh. you know it was the last round like 28 seconds left in the final round and he catches me with this uppercut down and knock a horse out. Oh yeah, and I seen that uppercut. Yeah, it oh, was yeah. like boom, and then you know I have hit the ground, my head's down, I'm like wobbling trying to get up. But what what what's going through your head? I don't remember that. I remember standing. I'm standing up, and I see him raising his hand. They had this confetti in the ring, and I'm like, oh sh, yeah, he won. Really? Yeah, my trainer was Lewis Rose at the time was like, yeah, man, you got caught, man, you got caught. I'm like, what, what round? He was like, the last round. I said, wow. why? Like, how long? He was like, wow. fight the 98 segundos. You know? Oh, man. So I was like, what? And then the guy comes up to me, he's giving me a hug. Oh, go, 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 fight, go, fight. You know, and I'm so, just so like, uh, you legitimate, legitimately was out. I was out, yeah. Wow. That was the only time in my career that I was really out. Because then I've also been stopped 
in the first round, like get in a fight. And then boom, I'm in there, I'm like super bad. And also boom, my, everything ch shuts off my entire body. Boom, and I'm on the canvas like noodles, like what? <laughs> I get up, I'm so, more wobbly, like, you know. Would, would that be the fight you had against David Lemieux? Because I know a, that was the first one. That was the first round knockout. Yeah. That happened to me and David Lemieux and with Curtis Stevens. I got caught quick like that. Yeah, I remember even laughing, like, I was in the, I was, like, smiling because I just felt my body was jelly. I couldn't do anything. Uh-huh. You know, I, when the when I put my hands up, the referee's like, are you okay? Just me shaking my head. Yes, yes. That kind of, like, t tilted me a little bit. Just the shaking of my head, yes, yes, it was not knocking me off balance. Uh huh. So that's how bad your equilib the equilibrium, yeah, equilibrium, yeah, yeah, it goes off like that. So, but um, but yeah, you know, I was still awake in those lo losses. I was still wide awake. You know, they they call it a knockout, but I'm like, damn, I just couldn't do anything. You know, so I just get waved off. You know, I, I'm just asking because, you know, I watch a lot of fights. I've seen a lot of people get knocked out, but a lot of people always wonder. What exactly is yeah. happening in that person's mind yeah, yeah. when they hit the canvas? You know, yeah. sometimes they'll get up and they'll start doing the stinky leg. Yeah. You know, you, you, your legs ain't there, nah. so you, you, you're drunk. Yeah. I mean, I tell you what, man, there was fights where I felt like that, like I've gotten hit in my throat, and and I remember like I got I got hit so hard, I felt like my Adam's apple came out of the back of my neck. And I couldn't swallow, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't do anything that I felt like if this guy comes at me right now, I'm probably gonna, he's probably gonna knock me out. I'm yeah. like choked up, I'm trying to keep a serious face and he's just doing this. He doesn't even know he got me hurt like that, you know? <laughs> so like things like that happen in, in, in the fight game. Yeah. But you gotta kind of like be strong, you know? You gotta be strong to go back to your corner, hear your hear your corner tell you stuff. Yo, I'm about to get the back out, you know? Like, come on, you gotta go do it, you know? And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. And you go back out there and you kind of do it again. Yeah. You know? What can we expect out of Evan Ayala in the near future? Well, uh, they're already calling me for a few fights, so I probably will take another fight. I'm not sure, but definitely I'm going to be promoted. So I'm definitely going to be in the boxing game. You'll see a lot more of me. I mean, I don't know how important this is here, but I'm also making my own wine. I have my own wine. been starting that, so... I've been just kind of like staying alive with different things like mm -hmm. that, you know? Got a boat? Yeah, I definitely got the boat. <laughs> fishing, doing tuna fishing, you know? Uh -huh. That's tough work by itself, too. Like, people don't realize, you know, those are like the most things I respect in life. Fighting, mm -hmm. boxing, and fishing. Yep. Because those are like the last frontier moves, you know what I mean? Like, the ocean is like the only thing that mankind hasn't conquered. You know? And so you out there at the... The forgiveness of the ocean when it feels like being good when it feels like being bad i've been out there and waves just going crazy and i'm just holding on like why am i out here yep <laughs> i could be doing something else like, this is crazy <laughs> but then it's like so calm and the sun is out and it's like ah this is the life right here so the same thing with boxing you know you gotta you, you can have a good day and like yeah i don't care how bad they beat me mm -hmm. up i won i'm doing this then you can have a bad day when nobody cares, you know, and you're like, damn, this shit is grimy. <laughs> yes. So, when uh, boxing is all over and you sit back and examine your life and your career, would you be happy with the end results? Yeah, yeah, only because I always look at the positive side of, in life with everything, especially where I come from. You know, we didn't have nothing. Like, you know, I know, you know, there's a lot of people similar, like, that have the lifestyle that I had, you know. With my mother and my brother, we lived in a car. You know, mm. we came, we lived in a, a, an abandoned building. So I've been into the worst struggles that I felt like at the time. I'm like, what the heck? You know what? I don't even know why this is happening. I was just born into this. Mm. So coming from there and my life now, oh, yeah, I've... I'm like, man, I did a good job. You know, I really did. I freaking trucking along here and doing all right, man. And now I feel like I got some brain left so I can do a lot better now. And when I say that, I mean for the youth, for the people growing up. Because all you got to do is put the right, the right information in their mind. Mm -hmm. And then they carry that torch, you know. So I, I think I could reach a lot of people, especially in the boxing world. Yeah. And, uh, and help them.
So that's what I'm looking forward to. Excellent, man. Well, Elvin, it's been an honor to have you in the studio man, tonight, man. Thank you. But before we go, I got a couple of what I call shotgun questions for you. Right, let's go. All right? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's your favorite song? Um, any any song? Any song. My favorite song, like, not for fight music, but is um, the one um, with uh, um, Mark Anthony, um, the Bandera one. The one that... He, que Bonita Bandera. Yeah. Okay. But it's not the go, go, Bonita. It's the one that he's singing, that he's saying that he wasn't, just because he wasn't born in the PR, but la, la Gerencia and everything is, you know, he's like, I, I love that song. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite movie? Whew. Uh, you already know what mine is. It's hanging on the wall. <laughs> God, uh, <laughs> Scarface. <laughs> Freaking, um, I used to like, I used to like Braveheart, the movie Braveheart a lot. But then I seen some newer movies, and um, man, I I gotta say like my I like western a lot. Really? Yeah, I like western movies. Um, it it was called the uh, the Holy Gun, I think it was, <laughs> because it was a it was about a Christian guy. Like he was about to get it, he was about to hang, and he wasn't even a Christian. He was gonna hang, and he freaking escapes. And while he was escaping, he seen a, a priest like shot on the ground. He put the guy's clothes on. So he just, I like that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Um, my favorite food used, it used to be freaking rice with with beneath, man, you know, and totones and stuff like that. Ooh, garbichuela. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> but so now I'm now I'm like comfortable with like. Eggs, toast. And a salad. Yeah. Dry like salad. <laughs> <laughs> that's the price you pay when you want to, you know, yeah, be victorious. Absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so true, man, because a lot of the good food, you can't really eat them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, I can't eat this. Nah, that's more like, nah, that's not for me. Yep. You know? Besides boxing, what's your favorite sport? Uh, I would say... I'll say baseball. Baseball. Yeah. Yankee fan? Nah. Uh, more like a more like a. Don't you say Red Sox, man? No, no, I know. But um, the Phillies. The oh, Phillies. the Phillies? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Big shout out to the Red Sox fans out there. Now. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite car? Favorite car? Uh, my favorite car was my first car I had was a Sapito. A what? A Sapito. That's not like a low rider. Yeah, it's like a it's a Toyota. Tercel, you know, Corolla, yeah, the Tercel? Corolla, Corolla, the two doors. They used to have the little window, the shade window in the okay. back. Okay, and well, Mazda too. I like that Mazda you got, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's like my style, all that stuff like that. Yeah. I, used to, I used to grew up with around that when they had them all hooked up. You had the pilones on the on the. Oh, remember the rims? <laughs> Call it pilones. <laughs> those are the the soup. Those are the soup. No, no, these were some white rims. Look like look like a like a butterfly. Uh, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. All right. And the favorite thing you like to read? Well, I used to I used to read a lot of like scriptures. You know what I mean? I like I like to, to read the Bible a lot. But now I like to read anything that is universal, anything that has to do with, you know, like life, you know, and, and uh, different planets and stuff like that. I like I like to go reach beyond, you know. Mm -hmm. Excellent, man. Well, it's been fun. My man. Been an honor. And listen, man, I know you came through a blizzard <laughs> to get here <laughs> yeah. tonight, but but you were a man of your word. You said you was going to be here, and you was here. You showed up in the studio. Yeah. You was ready to go. And you know what? I had some fun with you tonight, man, so I truly, truly appreciate the opportunity to have you come in Thank you. for an exclusive interview. And I, uh, I hope that all you guys that were watching, that you enjoyed it. You know, we can see it on the screen right now. There's quite a few people watching. And um, listen... Keep being Elvin Ayala. Yes, Keep sir. doing what you do, man. Yes, sir. And um, you know, you're on the big stage. My man. Uh, My man. Next God fight, bless. more I, or less. I will. Uh, I, if if I do fight again, it'll probably be like two months. In two months? Yeah. All right. But um, I'm definitely gonna let you know. You definitely. Know? And my, my, I won't be as, as happy as I am right now. <laughs> be back in my beast mode, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Elvin, thank you very much, man. You, I truly, man. I truly appreciate you coming yeah, to the studio. And I want to thank all of you guys for watching. God bless and have a good night. Saludo.